When it comes to home locations, there seem to be no boundaries. Humans have been making the most insane spots their homes, from deep underground to high up in the mountains, and many of these architectural wonders have stood the test of time. Today, we travel and visit some unbelievable locations of homes and other dwellings. 19. Home Sweet Home Dar al Hajar in Yemen reminds one of the song by Ed Sheeran called Castle on the Hill, and it was built in the 1930s. You'd think it was a fancy hotel or museum, or at the very least, the primary residence of a family, but no. It was built as a summer home by Iman Yaha. Known as the Stone Palace, you can buy a ticket and take a walk through and soak in the most incredible 360 degree views of the surrounding area. 18. Home is where the heart is. Built in 1968 near the little Serbian town of Bajina Basta is the Drina River House. It's been perched on top of that rock ever since. It must be a good luck charm because in all that time the house hasn't been affected by the rising and falling waters surrounding it. The story tells of a group of youngsters who loved the spot for swimming and tanning, and within a year it was purchased and with the help of friends the house was built. The house gained fame through a photograph by Irene Becker, who had it published under Photo of the Day in National Geographic. Tourists do head to the little home, but note, it is private property. 17. Bring the house down In the Cappadocia region of Turkey are the most exquisite and unusual homes built into the rocky landscapes. It's not just one home that you'll find there, but many, and that's because inside those fairy chimneys lies entire cities. Derinkuyu is one of them, and it alone has 600 entrances, with miles of tunnel connecting the homes, accommodating thousands of people. There are stables, wells, cooking pits, bathrooms, and communal rooms. Some researchers believe that the homes were already being built as early as 12 1200 BC. 16. Welcome Home The Crystal Mill in Colorado was built in the late 19th century and many know it as Old Mill. It was built by George C. Eaton and B.S. Phillips and you're right, nobody lived there but they certainly worked from there. What an amazing spot to go to work every day, surrounded by nature and freshwater streams. It's the most photographed spot in that area and it's easy to see why. 15. It's good to be home. Over in France, you will find the Castle Meur in Plougrescon, Bretagne, and this was built for someone who is not keen on having any nosy neighbors. The house is squeezed between two boulders, and it couldn't have been a better spot to protect the home from the strong sea winds. The home was built in 1861, when building permits were non-existent. The home is said to be lived in by a family member of the original owners of the house, and she has lived there since 2004. 14. Close to home There is this gorgeous archipelago called Vasmanir, just off the coast of Iceland, and there you will find an island called Elithai. On the island is one solitary cabin that has piqued the interest of many. Roughly 300 years ago, five families lived on this island, and they survived by fishing, hunting puffins, and raising cattle. By the 1930s, the island was deserted. There were rumors circulating that the island was donated to Bjork, false, and that it was the property of an eccentric billionaire, false too. So who does own the cabin? It's used as a cabin and shelter for a local hunting association who hunt puffins here. 13. Living on the Edge You'll be relieved to know that nobody lives in this crazily placed home, and it's merely an art installation by a Korean sculptor who named the piece Fallen Star. The piece was said to be inspired by his feelings of cultural displacement when he moved to the United States. It's perched precariously on the edge of Jacob's School of Engineering, and you can either view it bravely from the bottom, or you can head to the top and grab a perfect shot for Instagram. 12. Home and Hearth South Australia is our next stop and we're heading to Cooper Petty where you will find a little opal mining town and an entire village of people that live underground. The 2016 census counted 1,762 people who live there, 962 male and 801 female. The small town has earned the name Opal Capital of the World, and as much as what they rely on opal to survive, tourism helps immensely too. 
The heat in this area is unbearable, and these dugouts help protect the people from the scorching temperatures. The caves are not as primitive as they sound, and down below you'll find homes with three bedrooms, with walk-in closets, living rooms, bars, and wine cellars. There's even a billiard room and a swimming pool. We're not kidding. 11. Home is where I lay my hat. This is Wordy House on Winter Island in Antarctica, and it would take a brave soul to live here. It used to be home away from home for five explorers who were researching the island during the 1940s. By the mid-1950s, they had moved onto a neighboring island, Galindez Island. It has a living room, kitchen, office, dog room, generator, and bathroom. It was briefly occupied again during the 1960s. 10. Home on the Range this is thought to be the highest inhabited settlement in the world, and it sits on an elevation level of 16,700 feet up in the Peruvian Andes. It's called La Rinconada, and our previous post had more luxury than this village. Here you will find no plumbing and no sanitation system. They rely heavily on gold for their economy, but do struggle with contamination by mercury because of their mining methods. 9. House on the Hill the Kotsky Pillar is a natural limestone monolith located near the town of Chiatura. It reaches heights of 40 meters or 130 feet, and right on top you'll find a little church. The history is a bit sketchy, but it's said that the site was built by Christians who wanted to avoid worldly temptation during the 15th century. Other theories push it back as far as the 9th or 10th century. A monk by the name of Maxime has lived up here for more than 20 years. He has a team of followers who winch up food to him, and if he wants to leave, which he does occasionally, it takes him more than 20 minutes to climb down the 121-foot ladder. 8. Place of Safety If your home was hanging on the side of a cliff face, would you sleep peacefully at night? Welcome to Eremo di San Colombano, where building began in 753 and it was completed in 1319. This hermitage is located in Trambolino, Italy, and it was used by monks and hermits until 1782. It was then taken care of by the people who lived in the valley below. The church was restored in 1996 and it's open to the public. Just note, you will have to climb 102 stone steps to access it. 7. Caving In Meteora in Thessaly, Greece is a complex of monasteries, and translated, Meteora means suspended in the air. This UNESCO World Heritage Site is similar to our prior post in that monks and hermits have sought refuge here for hundreds of years. There are six Eastern Orthodox monasteries still in place, some dating back to the 14th century. And yes, they are still home to some monks and nuns. Thousands of tourists flock here yearly, and it's certainly worth a visit. 6. Domestic Bliss This is a private community in the Grenadines, and it's named Moonhole because of the beautiful arch that forms it where you can sometimes see the setting moon. It was founded in the 1960s by Thomas and Gladys Johnston and is now a private nature reserve. They got the help of local masons and used whale bones, native hardwoods, and items washed up on the shore to build their abode. Initially, the place had no electricity or water and they would collect rainwater for bathing and washing. The property is now looked after by a trust which not only looks after the property, but also the birds and wildlife in the area. An article was published in the New York Times describing Moonhole as follows. It is a quirky, 19-home, ecologically-oriented development built of native stone with whalebone accents on the steep hills of the island's southern tip. The name comes from a soaring natural arch on the shore through which the moon can be seen at times. The whalebones, remnants of aboriginal whaling by the islanders, are big enough to work as elements like stair railings. The houses, which rely on solar electricity, rainwater, and propane tanks, are mostly fanciful open-air affairs with lines blurred between indoors and out. 5. East West Homes Best Airbnb has nothing on these little homes in the Faroe Islands. They're like little hobbit houses built into the ground and surrounded by stone walls. The Faroe Islands are located halfway between Norway and Iceland and there are more sheep on the islands than people. In fact, there are 49,000 people on the islands and 70,000 sheep. 
The green roofed houses have been built this way for thousands of years. The area was visited by Dominic Sapinski, who wrote for CNN, saying, Lack of perspectives, loneliness, and remoteness are problems for young Faroese, and many leave to study abroad. 4. Home and Away We're off on a lonely adventure to the most remote inhabited archipelago in the world, Tristan da Cunha, somewhere in the Atlantic Ocean. Most people just call it Tristan, and it's a group of islands that has a population of a mere 297 people. The first person to ever live on the island was a permanent settler from Salem, Massachusetts, named Jonathan Lambert in 1810. He was joined by two other men and later a third. Within two years, three of the four had died and the remaining survivor, Thomas Curry, survived as a farmer on the island. 3. Home and Dry There are no guarantees about the dry bit, though. Solvay Hut is high up in the mountains of Zermatt, Switzerland. It's a little hut that was built in 1915, and by the time you get there, you'll be happy to be greeted by 10 beds inside, waiting to offer you rest after your climb up the 13,000-foot mountain. 2. Be Our Guest the stone houses of Lukomir in the Dinaric Alps are not only extremely remote, but also one of the longest continually inhabited villages of Europe. This is rather surprising because during the winter, the entire village is cut off from other highland populations because they are literally trapped in by snow. The only way people can get around is on foot or skis, and also it's freezing. The village sits on Balashnika Mountain and reaches heights of almost 5,000 feet. Nearby is Rakitnika Canyon, and local folklore will tell you that that is where dragons originated from. Before we get to number one, answer us something down below. If you could live in any one of these homes in their unbelievable locations, which would it be and why? We can't wait to hear from you. One, there's no place like home and living here, you'd feel like royalty. The Villa Belza is in Biarritz, France, and it was built in the 1800s by a French knight slash businessman as a gift to his wife. The dwelling has performed many roles, which included a home, a Russian cabaret venue, and a gala venue. It survived some epic storms and several fires. The latest news is that it's been restored and has several apartments inside now.